my channel. My name is Shantae and I'm an artist based in Brooklyn, New York. I'm sitting around looking at all this artwork that I've laid out and I've come to a conclusion that I am nowhere near where I want to be as an artist. I am nowhere close. So the pursuit continues. I want to go through some of my artwork just to revisit some past work that feels maybe not so great now but for me then that was it was stellar it was so good i was so proud of myself and then you know i tuck it away and i move on to the next thing right where i am now i definitely know that there's so much more to be explored there's this alice neil quill that really resonates with me and she talks about to be a good artist you have to have two things hypersensitivity and the will of the devil you have to be unrelenting even in the face of dissatisfaction because let me tell you i am dissatisfied with pieces that i finish more often than i am gratified by them and that's just really what keeps me going is looking for what is next so Come along with me to look at some of the things that I've done in the past for fun. Let's go through it. I didn't want to include anything from my childhood, but I had to include these stick figure drawings because I get so much enjoyment out of these. Seeing into the mind of a sixth grader, it is frightening, but also super entertaining. I love a good story. I love some dark humor as well and nothing's changed these are my girls they exist simply to be stunning and serve no other purpose they're barely finished if at all they are never painted with a background they stand alone in some random universe forever isolated i love them but i also pity them because it looks so isolating wherever they exist. <laughs> um, this one though, simply alone, the hair, stellar. If I finish that background, which I have every intention in the world to finish that background one day, I will hang that on my wall. Because out of those, she stands alone, she stands out, she can continue on to see the light of day. The rest of them will remain tucked away till the end of time. These next two pieces, one of them was done for an art show. I tried to be a little whimsical and add linseed oil to make it look drippy. I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but you can't make oil paint <laughs> look drippy like acrylic paint. I mean, I'm sure you can, but it's hard and it doesn't always dry the best or look the best. I didn't know this and it did not age well at all. I am guilty of unfinished pieces. If it was a crime, I'd be in jail already. And I have to say, out of this, this whole piece, looking at this, the hair, kind of, and the clouds. The clouds are so good. If anything, that's what I clung to for this piece. I'm like, the clouds are so good. These pieces look like they've been excavated from the archives so tattered and worn ripped this is the first time that i've ever done any academic drawing i'm actually really proud of the boxing gloves if anything they were done in less than 15 minutes because i am a master procrastinator at least i was back then and this was due that day and i looked at a picture on my phone and i just drew it and to this day, I'm still very impressed by it. <laughs> this portrait here, you can tell it's me, but she also looks like she descended from outer space. Very alien-esque. 
very otherworldly. I like it. I don't love it. But back then, I was super proud of it. And it just is so over blended. But this is what's up. She's cute. Can you tell it's me? Which side of my face is it? Is it this one? <laughs> Probably a few months before the pandemic started, I wanted to take my artwork a little bit more seriously. So I actively saw a shift in my storytelling, my reference image use, as well as my technique with oil paint. She is my retro Barbie and I love her. While I can still appreciate it, I'm not sure that I can go back and paint the way that I used to paint. It kind of saddens me that I didn't capture her in that era. And when I say that I can't paint like that anymore, each stage, that I'm in, I have certain constraints around me that I'm working with. And sometimes you just know too much. When you know just enough, you do that. You can't do better when you don't know better. And now I know better, so it's hard for me to go back to the way it was because I've been just so used to what I've been doing now. You can clearly see progression from my girl then to my girl now. This is my transition into what I like to call proportion distortion. Changing things deliberately for the sake of exaggeration. You can see here that I'm really starting to play with proportion. I started to step into stylization with a lot more confidence. Like, do you see that hand over, the, you know, shading those eyes. I love that hand. This basketball drawing was one that I had in my head for so long and it took me years to get the pose right and I still don't think it's quite right. I don't want to give up on it though. I do go back to it every now and then to work on the figure because I think the flowers alone make me want to finish this piece. I showed you some drawings before the pandemic. And now I'm gonna show you some of the drawings that I did during the pandemic. This is the first drawing that I did where I'm like, damn, okay, okay girl, I see you. But it also marked a time in my life when I realized the only gratifying process of doing a drawing like this is finishing it. I'm happy I finished it. I'm happy that it's a piece that I can add to my collection, but I started to realize, hmm, maybe realism, realism isn't for me. Even though it was a painstaking process, I look at it and I have very fond memories of it because I remember the time when I listened to Giovanni's Room. And it's a type of book where for me at least, it made me feel like I had loved and lost. And that's such a powerful feeling that, you know, you don't get to experience every day. So it was wonderful. This was not my first bar drawing because I also did some of the earlier sketches, but this was the first completed one. And this is really when I started to realize I need to start giving myself a little more credit for how far I've come. I was getting a little upset that my taste in art, or sorry, or my ability in art was not exceeding my taste, or at least they weren't matched. It was like my ability was here and my taste was here and I needed to, you know, bring those two together. So I was like, okay, let me learn foundation. Let me learn technique. So even though these took so much time, they were not a waste of time. Moving on to my final black and white drawing. I wanted this next drawing to look like shoes hanging on a power line, but I didn't know that that had a deeper meaning. When I was drawing this, I didn't know the connotations behind it. Um, 
but apparently it means it indicates where they sell drugs, like a drug spot. I don't know if it means that for every single place because I've seen it at the most busiest intersections in New York City where you could not possibly be less discreet if you were making a drug deal. So to me, these hanging shoes were just city life, really. Like it didn't have an easy for meaning than that, but I'm, I'm staying in my comfort zone and finding artwork that exceeds my current ability while matching my comfortability. So really, I think I'm progressing forward, but I almost feel like I'm stunting my growth by finding ways to stay in my comfort zone. And that is that overblended, perfected porcelain look. So it can't be all work and no play, right? I'm like, I've been doing so much academic drawing. So I wanted to do this just for fun. This is totally outside of anything that I've ever done before. My Mr. Lonely series. It's okay, we all get sad sometimes. And this is just a reminder. Phone a friend, go for a walk, even if it's in the rain. <laughs> So for the sake of having fun, I started to do a practice of abstract paintings. And to this day, of all the pieces I've done, these remain some of my favorite pieces because I walked into each and every piece with the least amount of expectations. And I think when your expectations start at zero, you can, it can only go up <laughs> from there. But they're so fun, they're such, just mindless pieces. At least when I do it, they're mindless, but when I finish it, I just love them. And I have them hanging in my studio so I can look at them all the time. They add so much life and so much fun. And I don't think I'll ever stop doing them. They've really found a place in my practice when I'm really frustrated or I'm really stuck. I say, okay, it's time to do an abstract. They never let me down. I love it each and every time. Okay, so for these three piece series, I wanted these girls to look otherworldly yet still familiar. I wanted to exaggerate proportions in a very stylized way and have them look bold, beautiful, and also a little questionable. You can see the academic learning that I did come to play in this piece while also injecting my own style into it taking the dated and turning it modern, in a sense. These figurative drawings for me were a, an opportunity to step out of kind of what I found myself getting stuck in. I'm playing with the boundaries of abstraction and form and figure, where you can clearly tell it's someone dancing, but there is no race, there is no age, there is no gender, it's just based in movement and as silly as they might look they're just on the scrap piece of paper but i still want to bring them to life in some way i want to do them justice i love these poses so much my colored portraits this is when i started get to get more confident on painting directly onto the canvas instead of doing a drawing beforehand i love a good dramatic shadow bold shadows just create more dancing shapes around the face and creates a bit of tension with light and dark. When I tell you the inspiration for this drawing is not as it appears right now, I started to grasp the idea of not clinging so closely to an image you have in your head. This was the first time I finished a drawing in this style, not necessarily even knowing I was going in and it was gonna look like this. I gave myself a small set of constraints. I didn't stick so closely to an idea. I left room for experimentation and I embraced the unknown and kind of like, and went with it. I answered creative questions along the way. For the longest time, I thought I had to have it all figured out before jumping into a drawing. This showed me that leaving room for error or happy accidents or whatever you wanna call it, surprising yourself with the unexpected is so much more fulfilling than always trying to map everything out from start to finish before you even begin the piece. So I've challenged myself to capture someone's likeness and to capture their essence while also giving it an artistic spin 
And now we've arrived at my current piece that I'm applying to my art residency with. These paintings are of people I know in my personal life. And to be honest, I didn't want it to end up as a realistic piece. I wanted to add my personal take on a portrait. However, I ran into a bit of a conundrum, really. I didn't want to create a portrait of someone where it looked like them, but also looked like a stylized version of them. I didn't want them to dislike it. I didn't want them to think I was making fun of them. So I need to start to paint more paintings of people that are stylized versions. So people get the gist of what I do walking into it. It's my comfort zone and I kind of fell back on that. And that made me realize that I'm nowhere near where I wanna be. Thank you for going through this journey with me. Through this all, I've definitely come to realize that in order to know what I do want, I have to first know what I don't want. And I've tried many things. It's easy to feel like you've wasted time. That's kind of how I feel sometimes. I know that nothing is created in vain. These pieces were not created for nothing. They did steer me in a direction and ultimately made me realize what it is that I don't want. What's left to do is figure out what I do want. And that's gonna take time, obviously, clearly. I've been working on it for years. It's still not answered, but I'm getting there slowly. And each time I learn something new to take me in the right direction. It was uh, fun taking that journey with you. And I hope you come back to my channel just to see more progression because this is where it started and who knows where I'm gonna go.